Hello, I just got back from taking a wonderful trip by train through the Alps, and of course this gave me lots of quality reading time uh, in between playing games of Scrabble with my husband, and I was especially pleased to find some tasty blue macaroons to snack on, and which complemented the blue of the book I was reading, which is Stillborn by Guadalupe Natel, translated by Rosalind Harvey, so that was very aesthetically pleasing. And I love the experience of getting so deeply involved in a story and just occasionally looking up to see this beautiful new view or finding myself at a train station where there's lots of people bustling around in transit. Yeah, sometimes gorgeous views can be distracting, but that's fine, and I kind of like that it imposes a leisurely reading pace. So I really took my time with reading this book, and it was the ideal way to get lost in this tale, which is so thoughtful and emotional and powerful, and I just loved it, especially because there were some surprising things I found in here which I related to very strongly. Although Stillborn primarily alternates between the stories of two women's lives as they grapple with questions to do with parenting, it also gradually expands bands to become a more nuanced exploration of mothering amongst a number of different characters as well. At the center are Alina and Laura, who are in their 30s. When Alina and her husband decide to do whatever it takes in order to have a child, her longtime friend Laura is initially confused because they previously resolved not to have children, uh, so much so that Laura had herself sterilized. But when she hears her neighbor's troubled child's Nico having severe outbursts uh, through the walls between their apartments, she becomes increasingly involved in his and his single mother's lives. Though it meditates a lot on parenting, the novel also dynamically addresses issues to do with female friendship, uh, career, and relationships, as well as feminism, uh, sexuality, economic disparity, and political unrest. I think it was partly an effect of lockdown and timing of when my own neighbors had two young children, but that long period at home made me hyper aware of the struggles of parenting in the same way that Laura experiences. I've heard fights and long extended tantrums through the walls that I share with my neighbors, and I know I've occasionally mentioned this uh, in past videos, but it's really an ongoing daily issue because there is not a day that goes by that I don't overhear a long crying fit. And reading this book, I felt slightly guilty because I don't have exactly Laura's altruistic impulse to uh, help out in this situation, um, although the, the mother and child in this story are clearly in more desperate need. There's the tricky thing of not respecting a neighbor's privacy and where's the line between showing concern and being in imposition, and these are dilemmas that are definitely explored in Laura's story as well. And once, when it got really bad, I did reach out and I sent a text message to my neighbor saying, uh, it sounds like you're having a tough time, uh, let me know if there's anything I can do to help, and the, the mother responded saying that they were uh, okay, and I knew that they were having a nanny come in as, as well, so I just left it there. I can definitely empathize with how things must be so much more difficult for this family than the inconvenience that their noise causes me. But it's also created a lot of frustration in my own life because I feel like I'm being embroiled in the emotional problems of a family that is not my own. However, I do accept that this is an inevitable part of city living. It's really meaningful how this novel approaches this issue and asks whose responsibility is it to take on parenting roles? Is it all down to the parents, or extended family, or 
friends or anyone who witnesses a child in need of caring. What happens when the bond between parent and child is transferred to another party and powerful emotional connections are formed. The story explores this through the involvement that Laura takes in Nico's development, uh, but also uh, with pigeons that nest on Laura's balcony and a nanny that becomes an instrumental part in caring for an extremely ill infant. I found it really moving how the story gradually builds the meaning of what it is to be a parent and how this is much more expansive and porous than our traditional ideas about this role. It also shows how parenting changes over a long period of time with the way Laura's relationship with her mother transforms. An adult child's relationship to their mother or father is obviously very different to how it was when they were younger, and I found it really touching how this story traces the way the mother and daughter come to understand each other as much more fully rounded individuals uh, rather than just parent and child. Another thing I loved about this novel, and it's almost eerie when this occurs, but Laura is reading a novel which I also read recently and also loved, uh, which is Solenoid by Romanian writer Mersha Cartorescu. And I read this novel several weeks ago, uh, partly because I thought it had a good chance of being listed uh, for this year's International Book prize, and uh, even when I found out that it wasn't eligible uh, for this year's prize, I continued reading the many hundreds of pages of this book uh, because it is brilliant and weird and wild, uh, but what are the chances, right, of all of the books that could have been referenced in this novel? Uh, it happens to be a novel that I also read recently and that I've been thinking a lot about. So whenever this happens in a book that I'm reading, it feels like there's this wonderful synchronicity that's occurring or a larger conversation that's occurring between the, the books that I happen to be reading. And it just feels like this great coincidence. Uh, I mean, has this ever happened to you? I'd love to hear if you've also had this experience at some point. There is also Alina's side of the tale, when she finally does become pregnant, there are severe complications. And I don't want to give any spoilers uh, if you've not read this book yet, uh, but don't let the title of this novel make you think you know what is going to happen in the story. It is heartrending following her and her husband's journey uh, going through this process, and it makes such an interesting contrast to Laura's experiences where the role of being a parent is something that Alina wants and desires so much, uh, but also doesn't want it. And this tension must be something that all parents feel, no matter the health and welfare of their child, but definitely if their child's development is impeded by such difficult restrictions. It's so moving how her side of the story plays out, but it's also interesting because the author chose to narrate Alina's story in the third person, but Laura's sections are all in the first person. I know some readers have expressed how this division didn't really work so well for them. I did feel it was slightly clunky at some points because uh, some sections about Alina seem to be uh, from Laura's perspective, but then it goes into such detail uh, about scenes and dialogue um, that even though these two women are very close to each other and talk really frequently, it felt like Laura couldn't have known all of the details. And this created an unnecessary level of confusion in the narrative. But I can see why Nettle chose to narrate the story in this way, and it creates another interesting contrast between this deeply interior account and viewing the experiences of someone going through the challenging process of parenting 
from the outside. So I think this novel is excellent, and while it raises a lot of meaningful and eternally pertinent questions, it's also a gripping story. As it went on, I became increasingly tense, and while I was reading it on the train, I had to say to my husband at some points, no, I can't play another game of Battleship because I have to find out what happens. It's the first book I've read by her, but it's Nettle's uh, fourth novel, and I believe her other books have also been translated into English, so I'm looking forward to exploring those in the future. And I can see why it's the most highly rated novel from the entire International Booker Prize long list, as I discussed in a, a recent video when I compared all of the book's star ratings. And as you probably know, it is now on the International Booker shortlist. On the Booker website, there's a reading guide uh, to this novel that includes comments from the, the judges about it and interviews with both the author and the translator. So I found it really interesting reading through all of these things after finishing this novel because it gives me a different point of view about it. So I'll put a link uh, to this reading guide in the description below. I particularly liked how the judges said about the novel uh, that this book is written in such a direct, unornamented style and the characters and their predicaments feel so universal that one could in fact be forgiven for forgetting this book was fiction. Its concerns are very timely. What does it mean to have true agency over one's body or life? What does caretaking entail? Where do we draw the borders between our bodies and our families? So yeah, it raises so many good questions that have like really kept me thinking, but also it is written in this very easy to read style. And there's a great insight in reading uh, the interview with the, the author um, because she said that she was uh, inspired to write this book because of her friend's experiences. Um, she says, in the beginning, my intention was to write the story of my friend and her little daughter, which I found incredibly inspiring, both terrible and beautiful at the same time. And so that I almost, um, makes you understand why it was written in, and narrated in the style that she chose, um, alternating between this first person and third person narrative. I guess it would have felt almost inauthentic for her to narrate it in any other way. And in the interview with uh, translator Rosalind Harvey, she reveals uh, that she and the author had some disagreements about what the title of the book uh, should be. Uh, so I would be really interested to know what some alternative titles they had were. She also makes a really important point about the unnecessary distinction that is made between fiction and translated fiction. Uh, she writes, the separation of translated fiction from so-called original fiction is a false and unhelpful one. I feel both for authors and for readers, not to mention publishers, and just generally for the health of the literary ecosystem, and we would all do well to just follow our interests and our obsessions and read whatever book we feel drawn to, no matter where it comes from or which stage of the meditation process it happens to be at. And I, I think that is a really great point and great to, to bring up, uh, especially because uh, this book is being nominated for a award that's uh, for translated fiction. And I think these lines between you know, fiction and translated fiction as almost genres is beginning to collapse somewhat and people aren't really caring so much about. And it's really interesting that the Booker um, did this survey recently um, and conducted this uh, original research where they found especially young readers were reading a lot more translated fiction. Um, so I think more than ever, uh, readers just want really good fiction, you know, no matter what country it comes from. There is also a brand new video of actress Jessica 
Brown Findlay reading an extract from the novel and it's really moving watching this performance so I'll put a link to that below as well. The Booker has been creating so much additional content around the books that they've been listing for the, the prize which I just think is really helpful and fun because after reading a book and feeling so deeply involved in it I want to go and be able to like participate in it and think about it from different angles. Um, so it's really helpful having all this extra information if you want it. Now I would really love to know, have you also read Stillborn and what did you think about it? Uh, do you agree with my opinion? Do you disagree with it? Let me know in the comments below or if you're interested in reading it now. Will it win this year's International Booker Prize? Uh, I'm not sure. I think it has a really good chance and it would be wonderful to see if it does. Uh, but we'll have to see and I'll have to think about it a lot more and weigh up all the books against each other before making a, a prediction. Uh, but it'll be exciting to see on May 23rd when the winner is announced. So thank you for watching this video. I, I hope you're doing well and reading good things and I'll speak to you again soon. Bye-bye.